Hey guys, John, back again. Uh, I'm going to do a little video on a water cooling solution for my gaming computer I have back here. Uh, right now it has a RX 580 video card, 8 gig. It's a pretty nice video card, but uh, it has a Ryzen, AMD Ryzen 7 3700 CPU, 16 gigs of memory, but uh, I wanted to try my hands at water cooling. So I have this card here. This is a RTX 1080 8 gig MSI card that has a water block. You notice no fans. But uh, I have a problem with this card and uh, this water block solution is from EKWB or EK Water Blocks. They're out of Slovenia. Uh, they actually make pretty good products but I want to show you a problem I had and their solution so I'm gonna fast forward here while I take this cover off okay now once all of the uh, screws are off let me move the camera around Give you a better view of what I got here. So here's the card, and we take the water block off, and this is well, this is part of it. This is one side of the water block. This is the actually cooling block that sits on the GPU. Take this off here. And then we have the part that goes on some of the memory. Now, I don't know if you can see it, if you can, there you go. Right there, that black cloud, that's actually corrosion. That's all the way through the nickel coating. This stuff has a nickel coating on it. So what I'm gonna do is I have to come over and on the back and take a couple of screws off the back here. Okay, so once we flip this over, this block should come up. There we go, and then you have you have this uh, thermal pad. Now it all depends because EK gave me a brand new brand new block question is, did they give me a new thermal pad? So, see what they got inside the little pouch. Nothing's inside there. So, we're going to use the existing one. It should work fine. We just need to make sure that we line it back up the way it was. There we go. Okay, so on the old block, we have to remove there's a there's a rubber o-ring or well it's a not really an O-ring, but so we're gonna pull that off. <clears throat> then on the back of this, we have three of these stands. Those should unscrew.
not threaded a whole lot. Maybe three threads. <laughs> That's all they got. So just be careful you don't lose them. So they sent me this replacement, EKWB, free of charge. I didn't have to pay no shipping or anything. I mean, I only had to show them that I owned the card. And uh, they asked me what coolant I was using. And I used, the, I used their coolant. I buy it on uh, Amazon. And I do it and I buy it and I buy the blue. Because I want it to be blue. Put that on. Tighten it. Just give it a good torque. It doesn't have to be torqued down. Just tight enough so it'll stay. Put the washer back or the rubber grommet back on. This is the one that's the hard part. Because you gotta get this in and keep it in. Because it's, it's gonna wanna pop out on you. It wants to roll on you. But you got to make sure that you get it right where it needs to be, right into that corner. And you have to be careful that this doesn't twist or turn on you and rise right back in there. There we go. Looks good. Now we line this back up. Just like this. We gotta, gotta be careful not to push on it. Doesn't have to be super tight. Okay. Put it back down. Make sure this rubber ring is back into place right. Got another, it's another O-ring that goes around here. That thing's got like a flat spot. Let's just hope it doesn't leak. We'll leak check it when we get ready to put everything back together. But everything else looks good. Put that back into place. Now you can either go with black or you can go with clear and if you go with clear it allows you to put in some lighting so I have right here I have some blue LEDs and they just snap into there and snap into there like that and then once everything gets wired 
you'll be able to send that to a power supply. Now, if you have a motherboard that has like armor and stuff around the around the um, PCI slots or PCIe slots or the uh, video slots, then that may become difficult because usually that rests right up against the water block. So then we put this back on, line up all the holes. And we're gonna fast forward again to get through all this. Then we have two washers that go here and here. These are kind of difficult. They tend to want to just pop out. All right, there we go. Nice and clean. Looks nice and flush, no problems. Okay, so that's our card. And this is our old messed up block. So, we don't need these anymore. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go over do a little b unboxing of this um, water cooling system because it's so cool. So like I said, this company's now obviously back their product since I was able to get a replacement block free of charge, everything. Everything was free. We'll go ahead and bring this back up. And then uh, put this card back in its bag for now. Like I said, I'm gonna use one set of these lights. Uh, what I do? Oh, there they are. I'm gonna set one set of these lights. We're gonna be for blue lighting that will light up. Even though I'm gonna be running, I'm gonna be running the blue coolant this whole clear area will light up blue because uh, I like blue. Put this one here. So we got that. Clean up a little mess. And let's see what we got in here. This is going to be our water cooling solution. So we get a warning. EK warns you that their blocks are made of aluminum and they give you warnings. Don't mix aluminum and copper. I mean, you can, in the same loop. What they mean by the same loop is uh, same radiator. Everything, it's a sealed loop going from the radiator to the CPU, to the GPU, back to the radiator. That's a loop. Sometimes if you really overclock and you do a lot of gaming, a lot of people put two loops in, one for the CPU and one for the GPU. You have a separate radiator, separate uh, reservoir, separate pump, everything. Every, you have two of these kits. So I'm only going to be doing one loop because I'm not going to go that extreme. Um, 
So don't mix copper and aluminum. They give you a book. Um, okay. It's interesting that the book, this is a 360G, and the book covers one A120, A1, A240, and A240G. 120, 240, 360, that's the size of the radiator in millimeters. So this is a 360 millimeter radiator. G means that it's, it's for GPU, but so I'm assuming that even though this is the 240G, the instructions are the same for the for the 360G. So we get three fans. With their screws. Pretty nice fans. And uh, if you don't know uh, how fans, how the flow, airflow of, of these fans work, like any other CPU fan, just look for these, for these, uh, this framing that goes around the fan and holds the motor. That's your exhaust side. So air comes in this side and out this side. You can kind of look at the blades too. They're going to spin this way. You can see by the way they're shaped. And then they're gonna pull, they're gonna pull the air in. And if you spin it, you can feel the exhaust coming out the other end. Now these aren't LED lit. And these are 120 millimeter fans. And there's three of them. You can use any fan you want. These are really good fans. I mean, they're really heavy duty. You can just feel the quality in, in these fans. But I have some uh, master cooler fans uh, in my case that are blue LED lit. I don't know if I'm going to put them in or not. I'll see. I don't even know if they're 120 millimeter fans. They, I'll have to look. But anyhow, it comes with three of these fans. And they mount onto the radiator, which I'll show you here in a second. That should be this here. It's really light because it's, whoops. I drop the screws. I mean, this is, this is no different than your car. It's uh, instead of water going from a radiator in your car, traveling through the engine block to keep your engine cool, Water goes through this radiator, and just like you have a fan in your car to blow air, cool air through the radiator to cool the water that's running through it, uh, yet this is the same thing. These fans, these three fans mount on here, one, two, three, on this side or this side, depending on how you want to mount it. I'll be mounting mine like this with the fans on top, and they will be sucking air from the outside in. You want cold air hitting the radiator. You do not want to run air from the inside of the PC through the radiator because it's not just the CPU and GPU that warms up. The power supply, even though it has a fan, um, the north bridge and south bridges on the, on the motherboard start to heat up. So you don't want to take the hot air in the PC and run it through the radiator. You want cool, fresh air in and then you'll have other fans to exhaust it out of the case. And then so as the water runs through, this cools it and uh, sends it back to whatever component. So, since this kit, it was actually not that bad. I think this kit I got it on sale, I think it was $2.99. Uh, most water cooling kits are really either cheap, too cheap, or too expensive. And if they're really expensive, um, most of them are pretty good quality. But this comes with a GPU block, cooling block. So you have compress compression fittings, a book, 
a back plate, more um, thermal pads for the for all the chips on the on the card, and it comes with a block. Now this is just like the other block. This was the instead of the clear cover. This is the the a black cover that's on it. And this is the actual block that the water runs through. And this sits on the GPU here and these sit on the uh, memory chips over here, over here. This is where the, you'd put down, put down the uh, thermal pads down on those chips and then you set this on top of it. And then you screw it in place onto the card with the, with the back plate. So, I'm not going to be needing this since my card already has one. So there's a really good chance that I'm going to be dropping it on eBay. Make a little money back on my, on my purchase here. So it's actually for this kit, it's not a bad price to get CPU and GPU water cooling uh, in one package. And then if you happen to get that video card, which was, I think I didn't finish the name of it. It's, it's a GTX 1080 Seahawk EKX. And the EK is this company, EK Waterboard, um, water blocks, EK water blocks, um, <laughs> waterboarding. But, uh, they collaborated with MSI to make a video card that was already configured for water cooling, which is pretty cool. So I'm not gonna need, like I said, I'm probably gonna drop that on eBay. Here is all the rest of the parts. So this is regular polypropylene tubing, um, soft tubing, really easy to use. You can cut it with scissors. Just make sure you cut it straight. Extension cable. This is probably for the um, reservoir, so you can connect it into the if if you need more room. This is the mounted reservoir. This is a three by one connector for the three fans that go on the radiator, and then you plug that into a. Uh, fan connector on the motherboard. This is a SATA power connector for the reservoir if you want to um, run it all by itself without the CPU, without the computer being on for testing. But they also give you this. This is a jumper so that you can disconnect your 24-pin uh, connector from your motherboard, slap this on, and then you'll be able to turn your power supply on and uh, fully run the system without powering up the motherboard, which is nice. Some connectors is for the CPU block, cooling block. They give you a nice big Allen wrench for the um, compression fittings. The, C the Allen wrench fits inside the compression fitting. I'll show you. When we install, then you have, so these are your different CPU um, backplates, whether if you've got an Intel or if you've got a uh, AMD. They give you some thermal paste for your CPU put on the block and these are some uh, screws for mounting the CPU block here's the CPU block get an input and output and if you notice which I have more of these LEDs I plan on mounting these LEDs into the CPU block also. So I, I plan on coloring the CPU block 
with uh, blue LEDs. I'm gonna light that up too. So I'm gonna leave them, I'm gonna push them in there and then leave them connected. Next up, you have some coolant. I think this is just like ethylene glycol or antifreeze. Um, sodium, it has a whole bunch of uh, names that most people can't spell or, or pronounce, but I think that's what it is, just like ethylene glycol. And you mix it with one liter of distilled water or you can go on eBay and you can buy it already pre-mixed and uh, you can get it in different colors. This is navy blue. Go navy. Next up is the last piece, the most important piece, and that's the reservoir that holds the fluid and it has an impeller and pump in the bottom. And I'm pretty sure this extension is used for this if there's not enough. Now, if you position this right, there should be a CPU fan connector somewhere on the motherboard right near the CPU. And if this is positioned right, it should just plug right into it. But uh, this thing seals shut. You can actually run it on its side. I don't intend to. I intend to run it straight up. Uh, actually, yeah, this, the block, I said that wrong, the block is here. So, yeah, this would, if you somehow mount it close enough to get it to a fan, then you can, then you can just plug it straight in. But most likely I'm going to use an extension because I'm going to be mounting my um, motor or pump down at the bottom. And then I'll be, I'll have an extension going up and plug it in and into a, into a fan relay our fan connector on the motherboard. So, that looks like it's about it. We got somebody outside, I don't know if you can hear the, somebody outside um, cut a tree down and now they're out there chipping it up. So, I don't know if you hear all that noise or not. But anyhow, when I come back, we're gonna tear my PC apart and pull the motherboard out. Uh, we're also gonna go over some cable management. Uh, most PCs now have enough room in the back where you run your cables and you won't even see them at all up front. We're gonna try and take care of that too. And, um, and install this water cooling solution in my computer and go through, go over the whole process.
we're gonna have to get a new case. This case is too small for my cooling kit. This is too big. Well, shit. So I do have to give a little disclaimer though. I mean, I've said this numerous times in uh, other videos that I don't get paid for doing none of this. I don't have any uh, other than the regular Google ads um, or YouTube, other than the regular YouTube ads. I don't, uh, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I don't get free products. This stuff even, you know, if, if I'm given a uh, review of a product, it's mostly because I like it. Uh, I'm not going to have any products that I'm going to have any on, on any of my videos that I don't like. So, uh, so you can pretty, pretty much get from me exactly who I am. Uh, no fancy editing. I just slap my videos on exactly as they are because that's, uh, that's just who I am. As some people say, that's just how I roll. <laughs> So, um, keep enjoying the videos. If you have any issues, just let me know. I don't have a problem with criticism. All right. So, the first thing we got to do is we took out our motherboard out of the case. And uh, since the case is too small for a 360 millimeter radiator, I had to order a new case. So, I ordered a... Uh, I think it's a thermal take and it's only it was like on sale for 69 bucks on uh, Amazon so it's got glass on it too so you can see through it and see the cooling system so first thing we got to do here is we have to replace this cooler this is the uh, cooler that came with the chip that I have on here actually it's a AMD Ryzen 7 2700X, not a 3700. So the first thing we're gonna do, disconnect the fan. And then you have a little lever right here on the side. You just flip that over. Kind of push down and pull that lever off of the clip that's on the bottom. The other side's a little tricky. You have to push down on the top while pulling it out and then it lets go. Now if your cooler's been sitting on for a long time, it may be kind of difficult to get off. You can just kind of rock it back and forth a little bit. Make sure these are disconnected. And then you should be able to take it right. up off of there it goes it's kind of rock it back and forth to snap the thermal paste because as it heats and cools heats and cools it can start to get uh, really thick and hard this isn't that old but you can see that this is kind of hardened up a little bit but we're going to clean that off And then what we need to do is take a Q-tip and uh, clean the chip off. All right, so first take a tissue. Get as much of the thermal paste as you can off. nice and clean. I usually take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. Don't get the q-tip too wet. Kind of 
clean off what's left and then wipe it down again. There you go. Nice and clean. So if you read in the book, the book gives you a couple options, different CPUs, an Intel or AMD, different Intel uh, configurations, I think. I think it has like three or four. Here's a LGA, LGA 2011 Intel, LGA 11, uh, 5X slot and then we have our AMD AM4 slot so the first thing we need to do is to pick out the right parts this says we need to have this guy And then we need to move this out the way. Take the water block. According to this, we should take our lights out. Mm. Pretty tight, but it came out. Take the back of the water block. Nice little rubber grommet on there. You're gonna take this off. This comes off. And then this one goes on. I wanted to make a comment here that if you notice that white shim that's underneath the block that has to line up with the ridges that's on the block itself when you put it back on. That's done.
Now we need to take the motherboard. Move those brackets. Then in the bag, you have these accessory plates. And for AMD, you want this one. And then you also want this rubber. This is for the Intel. So we flip the board over. Leaving the inner part on, place it down. In our plate goes with the lip up like this and then we have our stands that are in this bag That's what these look like. You have four of them. And you also have a small plastic washer. They go through the motherboard into, stop things from rolling around, into the metal plate. You just tighten it down, thumb tight. Doesn't have to be Seriously tight. And remember, there's two different ones. There's one with a short end and one with a long end. You're going to use the long ones. Got two of them on, so I should be able to flip it over. Get the other two. Oops, drop the washer. Okay. Now that we have four in place, we should also have, well, this isn't right. Let me see two springs. Oh, there they are. 
springs are all tucked together. Now we get some thermal paste. Now I want to try to align this. I have it going just like this. So the first thing we need to do is you got to put some thermal paste down. And you don't need a whole lot. Should be plenty. Paste got a little loose. Now we set this down onto. I like to kind of wiggle it around just a little bit, kind of spread it out. That's just me. Some people do, some people don't. Then you put on these springs. And then you put on these screws that go over the springs. Thumb screws. Now, you want to torque this down evenly. Do like a little crisscross pattern. I got a washer inside here. There we go. Okay, now I got all four in, so I'm just gonna do a turn, a turn, a turn, and a turn. Another turn, another turn, another turn, another turn. Then just keep going crisscross. And you just keep going until they're all the way tight and they'll stop eventually. There we go. And there we go. And last one. Tight. There's our block. All right, so that's all there is to the CPU block. And we've already got our video card already has a block on it. So once I get the new case in, I'll be able to install the radiator and um, put all the tubing in. That'll be the next part. Okay, I wanted to show you. Let me see if I can turn some light on. Um, that just how little thermal paste, if I can zoom in, yeah. How little thermal paste you really need. So if you look down inside there, well, let's see if I can, right at the bottom, right at the top. I need to try to see if I can turn this to where I can actually get light down inside it. There you go. So you can see the thermal paste squeezing out of the CPU. I don't know if I can see it in here down. I go right through that crack right there. I don't know if it'll zoom in on. Yeah, there it is. Right up. 
get it where the light shines in. But um, that just goes to show how much a small drop of thermal paste will squeeze out of the board or on the on the chip onto the cooler. So you don't really need a lot. And you don't want that stuff squeezing out, out all over the edge of the CPU and the socket. Okay, got a new case. Got everything put back into it. I have a couple, I have a couple issues. First thing is, one of these issues that a lot of people talk about is video card uh, sagging or drooping or whatever it is, because the card is so heavy. I'm not a big fan of these cards the weight of these cards and how they push down. Even though the whole fan assembly has been taken off, this, this part's not very that heavy. It's the, it's the um, heat sink that's inside that gives it the weight. But uh, you have the same problem with the water blocks on these video cards. So I'm gonna install, it's like a little lift. It's a little rod that goes in and uh, lifts the card up and kind of centers it so it doesn't put so much pressure on the port itself. I've installed all the cabling, ran all the cabling behind it, uh, but I did realize that I have a problem. Mounting the reservoir, I was gonna put right here. Obviously, it's not gonna fit. So what I'm gonna do is I have a fan down here. And as you can see, the radiator slides in this way and will mount uh, like about right there is how the radiator will mount. And then the fans will go on and then the uh, the cooler is probably gonna. I'll have to. I have to figure it all out once I get everything in. But um, that's how that's gonna go. Once I get it all figured out, it might mount down in this hole on top of this fan that's in here. The issue is, is uh, you also have to have a drain for water cooling. And what I've got mounted right now is this is the reservoir and pump. That's the inlet. This is the outlet. And this is going to go out to my water, uh, to the water block on the video card, out of the video card, into the CPU water block, out of the CPU water block, and then over to the radiator. Let's come right out of the radiator into the reservoir pump. You need a way to clean these out. You need a way to flush the water. Every, uh, they, they recommend annually that you flush them. And that's what this is for. So what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to open it up, flush all the water out, clean it with st distilled water just to get everything out. And then you close it and fill it back up. This is, a, this is nothing but a regular ball valve where the, if the uh, valve is perpendicular to the to the valve itself, it's shut. If it's vertical or uh, parallel to the valve, then it's open. This basically shows the water flow. So if the water flow is with the valve, then it's open. These are compression fittings where you just take the cap off, push the hose in, and then slide the cap back on and tighten it up. 
So, I've had quite a few things that I didn't have enough of, or I didn't, I wasn't really prepared for, and that was the mounting of the reservoir pump. It comes with this to mount down on that fan if I'm going to, or to mount over here. Um, but the issue is, is I need to figure out uh, placement so that I have enough room. And that's still what I need to work on. All right. So I've already done some work. New case. Already installed in. Uh, get a flash. Where's my flashlight at? Got my video card in. This is the little stand I was talking about. It keeps it from drooping. There's my block. Got my LEDs in. Got my cables all strapped down. And there's my reservoir and pump. Now, if I put my fans on the inside of the case, let me see if I can turn this a little bit. There we go. If I put the fans between the radiator and the case, it'd bring it out too far. And I don't know if you can see, uh, yeah, you can. This is the uh, drain. It's built right into it. It's got a little ball valve on it that uh, will let me drain it. Um, I'm short a compression fitting I'm gonna put on the end and then there's gonna be a hose that goes down and out. So what I did was I put my fans on the outside and they will take air in through the radiator and then I have a fan here, a fan here, and then a fan down inside here that will all exhaust the warm, any warm air in the case out. I've got an LED strip set up here. If I kind of take this and flip it upside down right up in here. There's another LED strip that'll color, put some background lighting. Um, and that plugs into the RGB port that's on the motherboard so that I can run it with the MSI software, change whatever, whatever colors I want. So the next thing I'm gonna do now is I gotta run some tubing that where this, where this uh, drain is, that's my, that's my um, out uh, from the pump. It will come out and go into the radiator and it will come out of the radiator into the CPU block, out of the CPU block into the um, video card and then we'll come out of the video card back into the pump. And then, uh, so we're gonna do that next and uh, show you how that's done. And then we'll have to leak check it and then kind of run it for a few hours and make sure there's no leaks. One of the great things about having the colored cooling fluid is that when you put uh, like a white paper towel down, you know right away that you've got a leak. Even the smallest drop will show up. It's pretty easy. But this is, a, this is a pretty nice case. The only problem I have is this ledge right here. Uh, if you don't, it's really difficult to get things lined up. I can't, obviously I can't put the reservoir here. They have these mounts for hard drives or uh, solid state drives, or I think they're for the um, uh, two and a half inch drive or three and a half inch drives for motherboards. You can put solid state drives in here. I have, I don't know if you can see it, or you might have saw it when I was doing the motherboard, I have a M.2 one terabyte drive that's mounted right onto the hard drive. And I did a little cable management. Got everything all strapped down here. I got a three terabyte drive there and a one terabyte drive there because this, anything I do on Windows, I do on this and that includes video and games. I have a good time, I use this for this little, uh, little uh, storage and backup for my window or for my Mac. Everything's nice and 
uh, clean. I might have to rearrange some of this because you got to remember I have a glass panel that goes over this back. So I'll have to rearrange some of this when I'm done. It's a smoke glass panel. There's glass on this. There's glass that goes over the front of this too. But these three fans uh, will light up blue so you'll be able to see that through the front. All right, so that's the next part is to do the uh, tubing. All right, so the first thing we got, I don't know if you can really see it, is we have the in and out for the uh, radiator. So what you gotta do though, is you gotta take your compression, the outside compression fitting, put it over your hose first. Press your hose. You can lick your finger and kind of put it around the edge of the um, connector and then push the hose in. Kind of helps it go on. One thing I noticed, see how crooked that is? Take a sharp pair of scissors and you want to straighten that out. There, that's a little better. Licking your finger, putting it on the end of the connector kind of just lets it, gives it a little bit of lubricant to go on. That's not that. There we go. Push it all the way to the end. Make sure that it's in there. Just like that, all the way in. Go ahead and put your compression fitting on. Put it up there and then you don't need to put it down too tight. Now we're gonna we're gonna put this right here down on the reservoir pump. We're just gonna line this up, cut that hose off. Now we gotta make sure that we Put a connector so you know your connector it's got a little flat edge and then a sharp edge the sharp edge is what screws on so you want to put it with the flat edge over your tubing make sure you hold everything support it get it on there this is the out connector we want the out going to the radiator so that the coolest fluid oh come on is going to come on oh this thing is slipping on me there it goes you want the coolest fluid oh come on There we go. So that's our out from our pump into our radiator. All right, that looks good, nice and tight. So now we want to take our next piece of tubing and that's going to go from the radiator to the CPU block. So put our fitting on. It's a little wet. I don't need a lot, just a little spit. Helps let it get on there good. And you wanna wiggle it around and make sure that the hose goes all the way in. I 
like I said, you don't need to, just needs to be hand tight. And we want to measure to our CPU. And we want a nice loop. Remember, you get about you get about five or six feet of hose. Cut this off. We're going to come in. Another fitting. Spit on it. There it goes. And the spit just kind of helps it get on. Wiggle it back and forth so it gets nice and tight. Actually, going to go up and over since it's going to be going down. Oh, come on, come on, get up in there. There it goes. Get this up and over. Cut this off about here. Like I said, make sure your cuts are nice and straight. Nice 90 degree cuts on this tubing. Now you wanna support your video card when you're doing this. forget like I forgot don't forget your connector Look at that. Now next, go on a connector. Okay, so now, get around here. I still got, you see, I still have plenty of tubing. Now I gotta take this up and over here, right about here. 
Always good to have some extra tubing. Nice clean cut. Put my connector on. sure you got it all the way in all the way around all the way to the all the way up to the end of the connector or the fitting so that's everything it's all the tubing done so we're coming out of the reservoir pump into the radiator out of the radiator into our CPU block out of the CPU block into the video card it'll cycle through the video card and out of the video card back to the reservoir these LED lights are just magnetic so so that's it I have shoot probably two and a half, two and a half feet of hose left. So if anything goes wrong, I got plenty of hose. So now what we gotta do is we have two connectors. Let me turn this light off so it's not so blinding. We have two connectors. We got this, which jumpers the 24 pin connector on the motherboard. Um, it just fakes out the power supply that it's connected and will allow you to turn it on and off. And then we have this connector, which I'll disconnect the pump and plug this into a SATA connector on the power supply, and that'll run the pump. Then I got to make sure I disconnect the um, video card. I don't want that running. And um, that should be it. I mean, hard drives are connected. That's no big deal. They'll spin up. It won't do anything. They'll just spin up and run. But uh, the motherboard won't have power, and the video card won't have power. And then when I'm, you know, if I had if I had the hard drives down here, yeah, I would disconnect them because if this thing leaks, I don't want it leaking on the hard drive while it's got power applied to it. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, napkin or paper towels and put a paper towel under the CPU block here. I'll put a paper towel right up under here inside this fold here so I can anything that might leak up here then I'm gonna put a paper towel down under here and then a paper towel down under here make sure that this valve for the drain is closed and it's nothing but a ball valve I think I uh, said that earlier um, I kind of rearranged how this was set up um, just the case they've gotten there's no fan up here I mean it will only hold 120 millimeter radiator up here because there's no openings for fans other than this one there's one fan back here and there's one down below that's it they don't have they don't have any more fans going across you have a power supply right here so if I was to mount a 360 degree power supply or a radiator in this case, the front is the only place it'll go. That'll hold a 360 or a 240 or a 120. But 240 and 360, that's the only place you're gonna put it is right up front. And then, you know, you have this problem. You have this problem with the radiator um, sticking out too far. If you've got a monster card or a large um, motherboard, maybe this one here is a it's, um, I don't know if it's a micro ATX. I think it's just a, a smaller ATX. If you had a full length ATX card, it would come all the way down to here. And then you had video cards sticking out. You'd, you'd, you'd have some problems getting this reservoir mounted unless you bought a full size tower. This is like a mid tower case. I wanted to run the radiator with the ports at the bottom, but where the ports are, uh, it's, 
it doesn't line up with the screw holes, so they have to be at the top. When I tried to set it with the, because you want, you want draining to come from the lowest point to drain out as much as possible. So you would like the radiator to drain. Well, having the ports up at the top, I literally have to turn the computer upside down in order to drain it because all the raw, all the water is going to be down here. Now, another thing you can do is you can take a uh, hose off that like this hose here that goes to the radiator, open up your drain and blow and that will blow all the water out, all the fluid out of the radiator and um, through the drain. Um, that's an option. So, but you, a lot of times you don't really need to drain. A lot of times you just need to cycle your fluids. So the best way to cycle your fluids is to um, turn your, disconnect everything, put, on, put your bypasses in, and then power up your pump, open up the reservoir, and then just pour in distilled water until it's clear. Once it's completely cleared, then you, you, then you drain out as much as you can, and then you put your colored back in. And you might need a little extra to drain out the distilled water. But uh, that's about it. So the next thing I'm going to do now is I got to get some paper towels put in, disconnect that, disconnect the motherboard, disconnect the uh, video card, and then uh, dis I got to also disconnect where it's plugged in right there up at the CPU fan is where the um, pump is plugged into. And then we can go ahead and start filling it with fluid and checking for leaks. All right. So here's what we got. Got some paper towels in place. Any place that might leak, CPU block, radiator, over here under the video card, under here under where these connect. Have our jumper in place. And then we have our video card disconnected, and then we have a jumper in place with a SATA connector for the pump. So what we do, should have plenty of room here. This is the fluid that I buy. It's the EK Cryofuel. It has um, biocides and corrosion inhibitors to protect the liquid cooling system. Don't mix with anything else. You, this comes already colored. I mean, they give you, with the kit, uh, enough for one liter. You pour this 100 milliliter bottle into 900 milliliters of distilled water. And um, it gives you one liter of coolant, which is the same as this, except this is already colored. So we go ahead and fill up our reservoir. And we go ahead and apply. I don't have to put. I don't think you have to put the lid on, but. Obviously, they don't want to go on level, that's for sure. There it goes. I don't think, I don't think you need to do this until we get it full. So, we'll go ahead and turn it on. And it'll start cycling. As soon as you hear it run out of fluid, turn it off, fill up some more. again you'll see you'll see a lot of bubbles 
Let it cycle. Here my hard drive's coming online, but you're not gonna find anything. So we got some bubbles coming through. So far I see no leaks. Nothing. Now you can see the blue. Now, I don't know if I show you this. Let me take this camera off and show you. Up underneath, you can see that there is air in the uh, video card. I could tap it a little bit, try to get some of that air out. Usually what you can do is put the lid on your pump Get, that, get the lid on there nice and tight. It has a rubber seal on it. Then shake your machine. You'll see all those bubbles start going. There they go. They're cycling through. Not too bad. Now, let me get this back up here. I don't see any blue anywhere. But, when you lose air, your reservoir drops a little bit. So, even though it's running, I'm just going to add some more. A little bit below the top. Okay, you'll see there's air in the hoses. You can tap on the hoses, kind of pluck them a little bit. Don't let them too hard, you gotta be careful. Take your machine, kind of rock it up. I don't know if you see all the bubbles going through. These are bubbles that are being found. Rock it back this way. Oh, look at all them. Yeah, I've got a whole bunch of bubbles there. Usually the CPU block and the video block. The video block's got some. I'm going to take it up this way. There goes some bubbles. Oh, yeah, there goes some. You can see the level of the fluid dropping. Those are all the bubbles that are being caught. Pretty nice. There's some more getting caught up. I want to try to get out as much air as possible. If there's any air, big bubbles or anything like that, then you have a chance of, well, you can actually turn this thing. It's not supposed to leak. Which it's not. We're not, I'm not getting any leaks anywhere no leaks up in the radiator nothing everything is running exactly as it should let's get let me get see 
got some bubbles. There's some bubbles in the in the in the uh, video card. What you don't want to do is flip it upside down to where the impeller and the pump doesn't have any fluid because then you're just going to be adding air to the system. Let me get this. There is Yeah, that looks good. There's a few, there's a few little bubbles up under the video card. Not much, just a few little ones. Uh, let me take this off. Try this one more time. I don't know if you can see. There's some right up in here. Was well, a bunch of it there. We cleared that out. There's a few in here. And usually they'll uh, cycle through over time. See those ones that just got caught up right there? There you go, it went through. So now what I'm gonna do, is we're gonna let it run. I'm gonna let this thing run for about an hour, just like this. I really wish the reservoir had a, you know, for EK, put a little LED light. Uh, I don't know if you can even see it, but they have, let me see if I can lighten this. They have their logo inside there. And it's a it's a clear piece of acrylic. And just like you did, just like you did for these blocks, put a little um, I don't know if you can I mean you could put a clear white, pretty much LED, just to light your own logo up. I may be looking pretty cool sitting right there. But uh as as far as their products concerned, I uh, I'm impressed. I like I like their product. I've um, had some other cooling systems that um, I enjoyed, but uh, this was pretty much um, right out of the box, easy to put together. Directions are pretty uh pretty easy to follow and um so far uh, i did some tests running battlefield 5 on fans and put some uh specs up in the corner while i was playing i'll put that up at the end of the video to compare um with a cooling, without a cooling, and with a cooling to see, or water cooled, water cooled and not water cooled to see the difference in um, in cooling. And then you know, once uh, once it runs for a while, then I'll hook everything up and then see what it looks like with all the fans lit up and the front lit up. See how cool it looks. And uh, so I'll be back to you in a few seconds, but uh, to me it'd be a few hours. Okay, so it's been a couple hours. I'm not gonna put everything together yet, uh, because if you read the actual instructions, they recommended you let this thing run for 24 hours. So that's what I'm gonna do. 
I got the paper towels all in place. I'm just gonna let it sit here on my desk and run. Uh, it's probably, I started at like six o'clock p.m. So six o'clock tomorrow, if I come out and uh, there's no blue spots on any of these paper towels, then we're ready to finish up everything. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, gone through 24 hours of uh, leak checking. Now I got everything hooked up, motherboard, and uh, got all the colors, fans, fan on top. And let me see if I can turn it so you can see. Looks like in the front. And that fan is on. Yeah, that's what, it, that's what it looks like in the front. Ooh. So, now what I gotta do is bring up windows and uh, run Battlefield and see the difference in cooling. I also gotta install the driver for the new video card since before I was running a um, RX 580, now I'm running a GTX 10, 1080. So I need to check, check it and uh, update the drivers. All right, so this is running a test with the RX 580. Uh, if you can look at the top left hand corner, both GPU and CPU are running at about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. CPU's at 100%, GPU's at about 70%, and using up about 10 gigs of memory. And we're running about 35 frames per second. Alright, so you can see in this video that uh, we now have the water cooling in place. You can see I'm between 10 to 15 degrees cooler. 127 degrees GPU. GPU is now only running 78%. And uh, CPUs at 133, only running about 60%, but we're at 60 frames per second using 10 gigs of memory. Can't really uh, complain. That's uh, just enjoying watching this game. I hope you enjoyed the uh, video, the instructions on how to install this system. If you have any questions, just leave them below. Uh, subscribe, place your comments, whatever. Criticize. I know my gameplay is not the best, but it's fun. Talk to you all later.